Right, here today at Barston Lakes. The wind is up, the lake's towing like crazy, and we're here today to show you how to come back the tow and catch some skimmers. Right, so with Boston towing a lot today, a sort of slim body floats are not going to be any good because they're going to catch the tow and it's just going to go through like a river. So we need a big round bodied float. So today we've got the new fish bulk floats in 0.5 and 0.75. Now being a wire stem and a round body float, it's going to mean one thing, stability. Now the good thing with a round body float is when it's sort of still and not towing, it's still going to fish absolutely perfect. But when it is towing and pulling, you hold back with these floats, which is absolutely perfect. Also today, we might have to sort of lag a bit of line on, so we might have to stick a few inches line actually on the bottom. And by doing it with this float, we can hold back, whereas on a sort of a slim float, we couldn't do this. It'd ride out the water and we couldn't get the presentation to catch these skimmers. So on the shotting pattern wise, we've just got a bulk and two to start with on both. But if it does actually start to tow a lot, then we'll actually string the shot out. So it's almost like a shot shirt button style, which will hopefully sort of lay nice in the tow. It's almost like a river effect. Your rig will be going through and you'll have your sort of shot laying with a tow, which can actually help presentation. Well, so basically we'll just experiment with that and run you through while we're fishing. Right, so normally we all fish dead depth, but when the lake is towing really strong, dead depth is not always the best. Now the reason for this is simply because your hook bait is not going to be still and it looks unnatural to the fish. So the best way to combat this is actually laying line on the bottom. So by this we mean adding sort of an inch of line on the bottom at a time to hopefully slow that hook bait down and catch more fish. Now the best way to experiment with this is like I say, add an inch on at a time and you'll sort of see your float, it'll slow your float down and obviously the stilly float is the more bites you're going to get. So on windy days, don't be frightened to add a bit of line on, it'll catch you more fish. of in. Right, so bait choice for today. Now, with the lake towing, I think it's really important to choose the correct baits to be able to fish with the tow. Now, your sort of maggots, your casters, light baits like that, they're going to get drifted away in the tow. It's going to be very hard to fish and know where your, your feed is. So what I'm going to do now is run you through the baits we've brought today. So first of all, I've just got some two mil pellets. Now, this I'm hopefully going to put this in as my initial feed. Now, it'll bring skimmy straight into my peg. But again, because it's quite a light bait, I'm trying to, I want to sort of come off it if I can, but as an initial feed, that's going to bring the fish straight in. My second bait, I've just got some dampened four mil pellets, and this is what I hope to catch on today, because they're nice and heavy, it allows me to get the fish in a light, nice little concentrated area, and hopefully they're not going to drift away too much. But also being a four mil, the time of year, they're going to bring some bigger fish in your peg. So I think four mils is hopefully going to be the best bait today. We've also got a bit of sweet corn, now, the good thing about sweet corn is the weight of it. Now, being a heavy bait, it's going to anchor me hook bait better on the bottom, meaning hopefully I'm going to get, again, better presentation and catch some better fish. So sweet corn, when it's windy, is always a must for me. And then hopefully to start the session, we're going to catch some skimmers just on your standard four mil expanders. It's a nice, again, it's a light bait, but how we shot at the rigs, we're hopefully going to combat the tow and catch some skimmers on this bait. And we should get some bites of, from skimmers of all sizes on this bait. So they're my bait choices. Let's try and catch some fish. Right, so let's show you how I've caught some of these fish today. So we've basically today we found the 0.75 float the best because the lake is actually towing like crazy, almost like a river. And we've also found fishing three inches over depth has been about the best. I know it sounds quite a bit, but when we fish dead depth, it's literally we're never going to get a bite because the presentation was terrible. I mean, now it's still lagging. The initial feed buys I just put sort of a quarter pot of micros in to get some fish in the area and probably like 15 four mils and a few grains of corn and I've been feeding it I started off with a kinder pot just to try and fill my way in and I got a few bites and then the best way to feed it now is just buy a catapult catapult in probably like 10 to 15 four mils every time you go out 
it's got a bite there. Now this has actually brought some better fish in today and we've got a lot of little skims on the micro pellets so just changing to sort of four mils and corn it gives you a sort of a bit more of a positive approach to catch them bigger weights. Now we've also been loose feeding a bit of corn as well because you can just keep putting a bit on the hook to try and just pick them bonus fish out and to just make your weight sort of add up a bit better. That's a nice skimmer probably 10 to 12 ounce. Lovely fish. So yeah, we've been slipping the odd grain of corn on the hook. Just now and again, it's caught us the odd better fish through the day and also just loose feeding a bit. But definitely loose feeding by a catapult has been the best way. It just brings them better fish up. But also, more importantly, because it's towing a lot, we're fishing through an area. So all your bait is not going to be landing where you think it's going to land. And this is the most important thing when you're fishing around the tow is it's almost like fishing a river. So your bait doesn't necessarily end up where you think it's going to be. You can catapult it at your far bank marker. And like today, we've caught two, three, even close to four foot down a peg. Just the fact, because the bait is drifting and that's just natural, just the natural nature of the wind, basically. Um, another thing as well, it's been really important, is using big positive droppers. So number nine or number eight droppers, just to show that bite up on your float, another fish there, just show that bite up. So if you use like little number 11 and stuff, especially when you've got a lag on like this, it wouldn't just show up in your bristles so good. And it also, with it towing it, it's heavier. So obviously it gives you better presentation. But we've had a fish like this pretty much every chuck. They're good stampers. You can see why I can do a weight here at Boston. And they're all like that. Nice fish. But yeah, we've just stuck with the bulk and two droppers for now. It seemed to work nicely. And again, just playing around with how much line we've been putting on the bottom. Like about 10 minutes ago, the toes actually got worse. So I've stuck a, another inch on. So I've gone from about two inches to three inches. And again, if the wind gets worse, I can always even put more up. I'm not scared to put six, seven, eight inches of line on the bottom because how it's towing, we're holding a tight line. So everything, some of like, again, like I said, like a river, because it's towing through, you're always on a tight line, so you can fish over depth and still see the bites. But again, if you fish dead depth, we wouldn't have had half the amount of bites that we started on it, and straight away you could see it was rubbish. Just went through like a train, and we had no bites. Again, the best way, I've, see it's windy. Best way is to lose feed when you can. Obviously, the wind's just got up a bit more, but... 10 to 15, four mils. Just catapult them in your area. Bit of a bite then. Again, it's reading your float is very important as well. Like, you've got to try and work out what's the bite and what's not, because you're going to get a bit of dragging on the bottom naturally with this method. It's all about just trying to keep that float as silly as you can get, and it's all about playing around with it. If it's not right, just don't. You've got to change. Don't just sit on it and be lazy. It's literally like a river, so it's the best way to uh, fish it like, really. Right, so chose to fish today, 11 and a half metres. Now, when it's windy, it's all about picking a spot where you feel you can hold your pole. Now, ideally on a, a flat, calm day, I'd personally choose to go 13 or 14 metres further out into the lake, but it's practically impossible to fish out there today. So if I did choose to fish out there, it would have been a waste of time. I'd probably have fish in my peg, but because I can't hold it or present it, I'm not going to catch the fish. So what I recommend is always fish somewhere you're comfortable fishing and you know you can fish properly because at the end of the day, if you don't get the presentation or the feeding right, you can't catch the fish. It's simple as that. So it's all about just thinking about where you fish and understanding where you can fish comfortably. I think that's really important. Now, as you can see on my rig, I've got a long lash between my pole tip and my pole float. Now, if you try to fish a little six inch lash or something like that between your pole tip and your float, you'd never get the presentation. I think it's important to have a long, longish line between your pole tip and your float. Again, just because you can see it's towing. If you had a short lash, it'd be bouncing all over the place and you just couldn't get the presentation. Also, I've got two number eight back shot down my rig and to make the presentation better, I actually put my pole tip level with the water, water and put my back shot under the water so it's pulling back against the toe which just helps again with presentation if you didn't have this it'd be literally going through really fast and you wouldn't get half the amount of bites 
Also, the round body float I've chose today, that allows me to hold back against his toe. If I chose like a slim bodied float, it literally just riding up, it would almost be sideways and you literally won't catch any fish. So it's all about stability, having that wire stem, a big bulb, big float with a bulb on the body, and you're going to get the maximum presentation, it's going to catch more fish. Right, so you just see me catch that last fish. Now what I've decided to do, because the float's actually going through even faster, I've decided to stick another inch on, on the depth. Now probably, I'm fishing probably now a good four to five inches over depth and as you can see now my float's sitting a lot more still. Now don't get me wrong, this, not, but this might not be the right thing to do, but it can catch you more fish because the float's still are. So it's all about playing around with it. If it doesn't work, slide your float down and go back to what you're doing. But don't be scared to try different things when you're combating the tow. Because again, like I said, it's all about presentation and the still you can hold that float, you're going to catch more bigger fish and then they're going to win your matches and you're going to catch nicer fish. So always play around with that part of the fishing. But on some days, actually fishing dead depth and running your rig through can be the best way to catch them. I just hooked into a fish there. So some days them fish actually like the bait moving. So don't be scared, again, to fish dead depth, and just try and inch it through or even let it go with the flow. There is no set way of catching the fish when it comes to tow. So it's literally all about experimenting. Don't just sit there and hope they come. It's all about chopping and changing and that's why the busiest anglers always catch the most because they work it out the fastest. Right, so there's another one just falling to a grain of corn to end the session. A nice fish, probably two pound. So as you can see today, combating the tow has been really important to catch fish like this. So go out and give it a go, you'll catch fish like this.